Welcome to a very special episode of the Striving for Rubies podcast. Let's walk together as we strive to be virtuous women in this dark world. We hope this episode is a blessing and an encouragement. joining us today. If you don't know her already, I'm so happy to have the wonderful Miss Ashlyn Biddy here with me today. Hi, I'm super excited. Thank you so much, Rachel, for inviting me to come on today. Absolutely. It's kind of funny. I don't think we've ever really had a chance to talk or hang out or anything like that, but I know we've seen each other a lot. Um, It's kind of like one of those people I know of them, but I don't know them. So I'm really glad to get the chance to know you. Yes, me too. Me too, I've been super excited. So, um, Also, I'll go ahead and warn you, my toddler is awake. So if you hear her making noise and adding her two cents in, just kind of <laughs> ignore that. We also have notes that we'll be referring back to. So if you see us staring off into the distance randomly, that's what we're doing. For our special video episode, let's talk about being content. It takes a lifetime to learn. I don't know anybody that is completely content 100% of the time. Paul says in Philippians 4.11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So Paul even said that he had to learn to be content. So being content is not something that comes naturally to our flesh. Well, at least not mine anyway. <laughs> mine either. I told, I may have said it to you, I'm not sure, but I know I at least told my parents whenever I was talking to them about coming on the podcast and talking and they asked what the you know subject was and I said being content and I said, I really feel like she should get somebody else to speak on that because <laughs> I feel like 98% of the time I struggle so much with just being like content. And um, when I was younger, I feel like it wasn't that big of an issue. But then like my late teen years to like these early adult years, I've just been like a hot mess. So it's hard. It's hard. That, yeah. Hopefully we can just talk real talk with you and let you know you're not alone. You are absolutely not alone. What does content look like? To me, it means, you know, being okay with where I am. I don't necessarily have to be happy about it because there's a lot of times I'm not happy with my circumstances. I'm not happy with how things are going. I'm not happy with what God has placed in my life. I know you might think, why would you say that? But that's the truth. And there will be times you're not going to be happy with the things that he allows. But he didn't say we have to be happy about it. We just need to be content with it. And there's definitely joy when we rest in the Lord and we're content in Him. I'm sure Paul and Silas did not like being in the jail. They weren't happy about that. But they were content knowing that God had a plan and a purpose out of it. Even if that meant death. I don't know if I could be content knowing that I was going to die. I probably know. I think I know that I could. (laughs) So what does discontentment look like? What do you think? Discontentment to me, I think, I think that honestly everything when it comes to contentment and discontentment is all about your attitude. Yeah. Um, you can be in bad circumstances, you know, just like she said, you don't have to be happy with where the Lord has you, but just remain like with a good attitude. Yeah. You know, there's nothing worse than people that are going through hard times and bad circumstances and they just are bitter and angry mm-hmm. and you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's what I wrote down, like discontentment, it can lead to other things, even sin, such as anger, jealousy, bitterness, it can lead to those things. And we need to be really careful when we're unhappy and make sure that we don't allow a little feeling to turn into big sins. And I do feel like also when we're discontent, we tend to like get ahead of God and try to make things happen for ourselves and that's not Oh my goodness. Yes, I know. It gets me in such trouble. There are so many times where I get ahead and I'm like, okay, we need to do this, 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 this. Even in everyday life, my mom has preached to me, you know, you say Lord willing. And there was a time where it made me mad because I don't like somebody telling me what to do. And I don't like being told, okay, you need to say Lord willing. And I say, oh, I'm going to go to this. Lord willing. It made me so mad. (laughs) But now I've... I've learned the older that I've gotten, I've noticed if I say, okay, I'm going to do this this day, mm-hmm. it doesn't happen. <laughs> it does It does not work out. So I've learned to say, Lord willing, so that way I remember, even the small things, so I remember it's not what I want to do necessarily. I can think I want to do it, but it's whatever God wants to happen at that given time. 
So I was thinking about times in my life where I've been happy with where God has me. Right now, it's kind of a happy, unhappy way of life. I'm thrilled that I finally have a baby, well, toddler now. And if you know me at all, that was a struggle. It was hard for me to watch other people be able to have children. And it was always a question mark. And it still is a question mark on whether or not God would give me more children. But I had to learn it's not about necessarily what I want. When I got to the place where I said, okay, God, if all I'm going to be is an aunt, okay, if all I'm going to be is a wife, okay, and my heart was still breaking with that. I mean, people would look at me and be like, I think I was 21 when I found out I was expecting. You're 21. Why does that bother you? You're 20. Why does that bother you? Because that's to me, most women, they have that desire to be a wife and a mother. It's a desire that God puts there, and He puts it there for a reason. So when someone would come at me, oh, you're young, you have all of your life. Not necessarily. Oh, I don't. Mm. It makes me angry because I might not have all of my life. I might have 10 years. And God knows that. But it's still a desire, and it's important. And I married, I've married a good man. So that makes me happy, and I'm content with that. And we just moved into a beautiful home and honestly we didn't think we were going to be able to get it i've not mentioned this to a lot of people but before we, we moved we thought we were about to lose our house mm -hmm. we were in a place where we thought we were gonna to have to sell everything we had and move in with somebody mm -hmm. but then look where we're at we finally had to get to a point where it's like okay god whatever you want we'll try this one last thing and here we are here we sit we still have a roof over our head still have food in our bellies baby's happy and healthy one of the happiest times I think I've ever been in the Lord was when I was 16. I was dating the 21 year old that I talk about in the book and I was just unhappy with our relationship, but being a 16 year old, I didn't want to break it off because I liked having a boyfriend. That was fun. <laughs> um, and don't let anybody tell you that it's not fun to date. It's not fun to have somebody that, that you call yours, that it's okay. It is okay to want that. It is okay to have that. Just keep it in perspective for what God wants for you. Anyway, eventually I started begging God for an answer about, you know, if I needed to stay with this person, if I needed to, you know, break it off. And I was not strong enough to do that. I really wasn't. I hate saying that, but I was not strong enough to do that. So I started praying and started reading my Bible more and asking him, okay, you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to show me. I know you're not supposed to tell God, okay, you have to do this. But that's what I did because I didn't know what else to do. And he brought my husband into my life. And then I'm like, okay, well, that's not what you meant. So I said, I started praying, maybe he'll do this. He'll do this thing. He'll talk to me. He'll do this thing. He'll come see me. And he'll start coming to church on Wednesday nights. Check, check, check. <laughs> and what I did not realize in that time period was I was getting close to the Lord and I didn't even realize it because I was reading the Bible. I was trying to find answers and I was talking to him. And I think I've talked about it in the book. How can you have a relationship with somebody you don't talk to them? Right. How can I know what God's thinking or what he wants if I don't talk to him? And that's how I drew close to the Lord in that time. And it was one of the happiest times of my life because I was close to him and it just kind of happened. And over the course of life, we when we draw, when we go further away from the Lord, that's when, to me, that's when some of the discontentment right. starts to set in. For sure. I agree. I feel like, again, going back to attitude, whenever my mind, um, my mindset is not where it needs to be and I get selfish and I'm like, why is that happening for somebody? Why isn't it happening for me? That's when I really start to get I don't want to say bitter and angry but it's just like I feel like sometimes the Lord isn't being fair to me mm -hmm. and that <coughs> is definitely not a place that you want to be no, in it's not. but I I'm 24 and I don't think I said that already mm -mm. okay I'm 24 <laughs> and um growing up all I ever wanted was to be a wife and a mom like and I think that especially for Christian girls, like that's just kind of what you're expected to yeah. do. Like the world tells you that's not what you want. Exactly. But if you want that, that is, then there's nothing wrong there, with no. it. You know, but 
there for a while I felt like that was the only thing that I was like good for you know yeah. and I thought if I'm not married right out of high school like all these other girls and you're yeah. popping out babies yeah. then you know I don't have a purpose so I was with a guy um like my I guess it was probably my junior year of high school up until my senior year of high school and we were planning on getting married and all that kind of stuff which looking back thank the lord <laughs> that that did not happen but um we ended up breaking up like right before I was about to graduate high school and I was just kind of like um <laughs> hello Lord <laughs> what am I supposed to do now you know yeah. and I just felt like I didn't have a purpose and so I feel like I was very discontent at that point in my life and I let that really um affect every aspect of my life and I feel like I became very bitter and very angry and then for years, honestly, I felt like it kind of controlled who I was and it spilled over into other aspects of my life. And I'm the type of person I don't really deal with my emotions and my feelings. I just kind of like keep it inside. So until it all blows up. It, oh, <laughs> and when it blows up, it's not good. So time went on. I got in another relationship. That one didn't work out. So then I kind of ran away from my problems. Um, I moved away, moved to South Dakota and did some missions work for a while. That didn't really work out. Um, so then I moved back and then that was like 2018. And then at the end of 2019, I actually got saved and I made, you know, professions when I was younger, but I believe in at the end of 2019, that's really when I gave my heart and my life to Jesus. And since then, everything is like so different. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like all those years were kind of wasted, like from when I was 17 up until like 20, I'm 24 now, how old was I in 2019? 22. 22? Yeah, so from like 17 to 22, I feel like I was just kind of like bitter and angry and I wasn't saved. So I obviously didn't have a relationship with the Lord, but I thought I was saved. So I was like trying to be good and try. It was just like a hot mess. Like, that's the only way I know how to describe it. So, I feel like I spent all of those years so discontent. And then now, um, probably right after I got saved, like, probably 2020, honestly, even though all the bad stuff yeah. happened with COVID and all that, like, I feel like that was a very good time for me because that's really whenever I started developing an actual relationship with God, not some fake fabricated thing that I was trying to do because I was a pastor's kid and that's just what you were supposed to do and I was you know traveling and singing like all these kind of crazy things that were going on in my life that Christians are supposed to do it was all fake you know so I feel like 2020 was really a good time for me and then at the end of 2020 towards the end I kind of like I said got ahead of God and again um, got in another relationship that was just not good at all so that's kind of been ended just recently towards the beginning of this year and so now I feel like where I'm at in life I just kept waiting for things to happen um I never really like took action I guess and I'm not saying like going ahead of God but like I feel like my entire life I just thought okay whenever I get to this stage of life then life is going to be happy mm -hmm. whenever I get a husband that's when I'm going to be happy whenever I do this that's when I'll be happy and so I've just really honestly decided recently that I'm not waiting for a husband to be happy <laughs> like I'm not going to wait till I have kids to be content because there's always going to be something more. right you know what I'm saying absolutely so now I'm working at our church teaching piano lessons um I'm in cosmetology school, and even though I'm not really content in the area of a relationship, um, there's so many other yeah. things that God's doing in my life that I feel like I am content in. My attitude towards one area of my life that I'm not content in, don't let your attitude towards one thing you're not happy about affect your attitude towards your entire life. Right. Because when you look around, there are so many other good things that are happening like don't get focused on the negative but and that's exactly how I was when right before me and my husband got married mm -hmm. we had been together almost three years and I was the same way okay I'm out of high school why has it even a ring on my finger <laughs> right. like what's the hold up why is he still living with his parents like what the <laughs> what's world going on? um like and he had this idea he told me later on that he you know he wanted to get a house or get work apartment wherever 
and lived by himself for like six months. And I'm sitting here like, excuse me? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I know, that's literally <laughs> what I was thinking. And I kid you not, like I had been fucking him for months, like pulling this pitiful little act, <laughs> like you don't love me, if you don't blah, 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 I'm gonna walk like, okay, I was 19, yeah, I was 19, so <laughs> give me a little slack there, but I was like, you know, I'm, you don't love me enough, what is the deal you got? I knew where he had some money set aside, so I'm like, what the heck, like what are you, what are you saving that for? Like all this kind of stuff. And I was coming home from work one day, or actually I was going to his house. We had, he had gotten out, got into his own house and everything, and I was gonna go see him. And we were gonna go out to dinner. Well, I was on my way and I was praying. I was like, and this was after we had a phone conversation during my lunch break. And I was, I was complaining to him again <laughs> about why don't you love me? Why aren't you putting a ring on it? You have a house, what are you waiting on? And I was on my way home and I remember the spot in the road. I remember it distinctly. I could take you to it right now where I said, okay, God, I give up. If that's what, this is what it's gonna be, then it's what it's gonna be. It'll happen when it happens. And still, even though I had given it up, once I got there, I was still on the Molly Grubs. And I was just like, I was, I was horrible. Like I was just awful. I had the worst attitudes. Like it's all about attitude. attitude. And I had the worst attitude. I was just being a big baby. That's all in the world it was. Well, we uh, were gonna go out to dinner. So I had gone out to the car and he had come out and was getting in the driver's seat. I kid you not, I looked at his pockets to see if I could see a ring box. I did. Like, I was doing that so much. It was just becoming second nature. Well, I didn't see anything. So, <laughs> we went on to eat, and he didn't really eat his food, which was weird to me, but I was like, okay. Then we went to this park that we had frequented a lot during our dating relationship. And he's like, we used to always stop at this rock and look at this blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, let's do that again. And next thing I know, he's down on one knee. This is after I had been such a big baby, by the way. <laughs> so he was very golden to still do that. And what I did not know was he had gotten the ring like a month before. Mm -hmm. And he had hidden it where he knew I wouldn't go look with all of his games and stuff like that. I wouldn't go pay attention to it. <laughs> um, and he had gotten it like a month before. While I was sitting there still complaining, while I was sitting there asking God, why doesn't he love me? Why isn't he, why aren't we getting married? Why is this not happening for me? It was waiting on me. I just, it was not the right time. And I asked him later on, I thought for the longest time, we recently just got this settled. I thought that I guilted him into marrying me. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm sitting here acting like it, <laughs> complaining about it. So, oh, he just married me cause he had to. Right. Well, ladies, let me tell you, men most of the time don't do things they don't want to do. Just FYI. And he told me, he's like, no, Rachel, I proposed because that was the time I was supposed to propose. That's when God told me to propose, and that's when I did it. Mm -hmm. And looking back now, I can see, and I can give you this example in showing you that God's got something for you. Right? You just can't see it. It's hidden in the back of the bookcase, and you just don't know it yet. But it's there. So those are just, I mean, ways we've been discontent or content in life. I mean, it, ha it comes and it goes. Things come in seasons. There'll be seasons where everything's wonderful and sunshine and roses and you know you can't see anything bad and then all of a sudden it comes crashing down and you don't know if you're going to come out of it so how do you overcome it something that i have really wanted to and this was a verse that i got years and years ago before i was even saved but it's in isaiah i brought my bible so i read it because sometimes i get it mixed up but um Isaiah chapter 55 and there's two verses and whenever I'm really just feeling discontent and unhappy and just like angry and mad and like why is this happening why didn't this work out then like these are the verses that I go to um, Isaiah 55 8 and 9 says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts and so when I go to those verses, it just reminds me to like take a step back and think, okay, I may have wanted this to happen and I may have wanted you know, this to work out, 
But the only reason, and me and Rachel were talking about this earlier, the only reason that that didn't work out is because God has something so much better planned for me. So, like I said, I'm just being transparent with y'all. I'm not content where I am, like, relationship-wise. But my thinking is, and, like, this is what the Bible says, you know, my other past relationships didn't work out because there's someone out there that God asked for me that's just 10 times better that, you know, will compliment me more. Or whenever I, you know, was living in South Dakota doing missions work and then that didn't work out and I just, you know, okay, maybe that's because God has a better plan and he has something else to do. So really like just find you a verse and cling to it with everything in you. Like my dad, he preaches a message about, um, like being on, let me think of how he says it, being on the little end of something big. So like the Bible is full of promises and full of verses that you can claim as yours. He wrote them for you. So you don't have to memorize the whole Bible. No. You don't have to find a whole entire chapter that just speaks to you. Like find you one verse or find you two verses like these and just cling to it with everything in you. It's a promise from God. And whenever you're down, whenever you're discontent, wherever you're discouraged, just say those verses and cling to them. That's what helps me. That and just, you know, praying and asking the Lord to help you to be content with where you are. Um, but just knowing that he has something better out there and that this is just temporary. Yeah. Where I'm at in life, what I'm struggling with, what I'm upset with, it's not here to stay. That's something that I've really um, tried to drive home in my own mind recently yeah. is this season of life isn't forever. You know what I'm saying? My uncle said when, because when I was younger, my dad left, and then we had to do visitation, and that was really hard, and that was that was difficult. And there was one time I was, because I was getting older, and I was understanding more and questioning why do I have to go? Why can't I just say no? Mm -hmm. I wasn't of age where the court said I could. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom called my uncle one night, and just trying to get me some help, get me some encouragement, and he said it won't last forever. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I has stuck with me along with what our pastor preached recently or really was teaching about uh, reading your Bible. And I really struggle sometimes to sit down, pick up my Bible and take time to read like a big passage of scripture. Well, what he was talking about was just read, get it in you however you can. Get you a devotional, which I had been doing. I just didn't think it was enough. Mm -hmm. And it might, and it's not enough, you know, in the long run, right. but it was getting it in me. And I've taken that and you were talking about getting two verses or a verse, mm -hmm. just something to cling to. And I've really started doing that myself recently, just finding something and holding to it. I read it over and over right. and over. Read the same chapter over and over if you have to, because God can use that to bring that joy mm -hmm. back. Right. And, and like she said, that's what it's there for. He didn't write it just to sit there and, you know, look pretty. Right. It's there for your benefit. Some things you can't fix, but there's a reason you can't fix it. God can. Mm -hmm. And he allows things in our lives that we can't fix. We're in a situation right now. We can't fix it. We absolutely cannot. There are things we could do that would help. Right. But in the long run, God's going to have to do something big. And I'm going to believe that he is. And I have to cling to that. There have been so many times in my life where God has had to fix it. And I didn't. That visitation where I had to, where I had to go with my dad, it didn't last forever. It ended before it technically could have or should have. It stopped. Mm -hmm. um, but that was not something my mom did. That was not something the court did. That was something that God did. God did it. And it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. It's easier to say, well, just trust God. <laughs> well, it's hard when you're sitting there and you can see the waters rising, 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 rising. Am I going to get out of this? He's got a plan and a purpose. And being content where you're at is something that, like I've said, I don't think we'll ever master. Because <laughs> it comes and it goes. And the best thing that you can do is make sure it doesn't breed bitterness. I have met a lot of bitter people in my <laughs> life. And sometimes they've come out of it, and sometimes they just let themselves sink into it. And there's a big difference between happiness and joy. Joy can only come from the Lord. Yeah, temporal things can bring us happiness. Yes. But if it's going to be something that is long-lasting, it's got to come yeah. from the Lord. Because He's the only thing that doesn't change. Right. So.
Um, how can so how can you find joy here in the bad times? Reading the Bible for sure. If like my pastor told us recently, just get it in you, mm -hmm. however you can. Prayer, just pray. You can't get to know somebody without talking to them. So if you're gonna get to know the Lord and His plan, you gotta talk to them. And I do have something to say about this. That's it might be kind of off topic a little bit, but like when it comes to reading your Bible and praying, like don't get overwhelmed. I mm -hmm. feel like a lot of times, and I don't think they do it intentionally, but I feel like sometimes preachers or like older Christians when they talk about like their prayer times or like when they read, they say, oh yes, I spend hours. It's intimidating. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> okay, well, you're a lot better of a Christian than me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so like, yes, as you grow in the Lord, you will read more right. and you will pray more. But like right now, if you're not reading your Bible or you're not praying at all, like spending five minutes reading and praying is better than nothing. So like, mm -hmm. just take it in like baby steps. Don't be overwhelmed with it because I feel like that was kind of where I was there for a while was like you know when am I going to have 45 yeah. minutes to read the Bible yeah. or when am I going to be able to pray for three hours you know but it's just about being intentional and taking time to spend a few minutes with the Lord and then as you grow you know then that desire grows and that time will grow mm -hmm. but don't be intimidated no. by it. I just feel like that's something that kind of happens a lot it is. especially with younger women in my opinion just don't let it overwhelm you. I saw something that kind of relates to that when specifically talking to mothers and when you're a mom you ain't got time it's gone <laughs> you cannot have time before kids but after kids you your time is not your own you don't get to really choose what you do when you do it and it was talking about the times you know when am I gonna have time to pray when am I gonna have time to talk to the Lord Lord I'm overwhelmed and I believe it's in First Thessalonians, it says pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. So it was a picture of a woman doing the dishes, talking to the Lord. Why can't you do that? Right. I've done that so many times going down the road. Okay, Lord, can you do this for us? Can you give us traveling mercies? Talking about just everything that's going on. There's a situation that I can't control. Because most of that was just me and my kid in the car. So she's not really paying attention to me. <laughs> but on the other hand, she knows that mama's praying. Mama's talking to somebody. And I can't wait for the day when she asks me, who are you talking to? But God will come to you where you are. You just have to make that first step. He's only yeah. as close to you as you allow him to be. For sure. So if you want to keep him at arm's length, he'll stay at arm's length. He won't force himself on you. But don't think that he'll let you stay there for long. He'll give you a reason to get close to him. He wants to be close to his children. I don't know any parent that does not want to be near to their kids. Right. I don't know any parent that doesn't want that. And he is a good father. Mm -hmm. A very good father. So find the time somewhere to talk to him. It can be when you're taking a shower. It can be when you're out <laughs> exercising, you're, wa you're uh, watering your garden, you're doing yard work, anything like that. Just find the time. Here is something that we might get dinged for. Mm -hmm. But attend church faithfully. Let me underscore that. Faithfully. <laughs> not when you want to. Not just, you know, when you feel good. You don't get a free pass to skip. I'm tired. Right. I don't, you know, I just, I've had a long day. If Jesus felt like that when he was on the cross and he said, okay, I'm tired. I've been beaten too many right. times. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back to heaven. Y'all have at it. Where, Where would, would we be? be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Where would we be? Continue trusting in his will. I love those verses in Ecclesiastes. I think it's chapter three where it talks about there's a season. Um, yeah. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. I don't know it by heart, but it just goes through talking about how there's a time for everything. Yeah. So he has a plan for you. He has a will. And so just trust that and cling to that. And whenever it's the right timing, then it'll come to pass. And you'll look back years down the road and be like, why was I so worried about that? It was literally right there. I know. Also, having good Christian friends is something that is very rare to find, but they're good to have. Yes. I can't tell you how many friends have come and gone in my life. And it's sad because most of my friends have come from church. Mm -hmm. They have come from church. That is all I was really ever exposed to. Right. And then like I would get close to somebody and they would go. Maybe. And then I would start a really good relationship with somebody, would get close, and then they're gone. Mm -hmm. I can say that one of the one of the girls that I thought was gonna be my maid of honor at my wedding, looking at her now, she's Christian. But like tattoos, 
everywhere, piercings everywhere, and it's a come as you are kind of Christianity. And that's not Christianity, by the way. Um, so I see why God moved her out of my life. There, ha there was somebody else. We were pretty close, and our paths just they they went their own separate ways. Not that we had disagreement or fallen out; they just went their separate ways. And a lot of the family stuff that she's had to deal with, did I didn't need to be influenced by that mm -hmm. because I get sucked in quick. I get close quick. Me too. <laughs> and Me when, too. when you get close, you get hurt. Mm -hmm. Um. So let God send you friends. Mm -hmm. And when he tries to remove them, don't fight it. Mm -mm. If he, like she was saying, sometimes, you know, it's not a big falling out. Sometimes it's not a big argument that causes friends to go separate ways. It's just life or, you know, lifestyles or whatever. Yeah. But that happens for a reason. Everything that happens, God has designed. So if he's, you know, kind of driving a wedge between you and someone, um, don't fight it because... Like you said, you're directly influenced by who you are around, um, who you spend your time with. So if it's going to be a negative influence, then it will affect every single aspect of your life. So don't let a friendship bring you down and away from the Lord. I'm kind of dealing with a situation right now where I was really, really close to someone and um, we just kind of started drifting. And I did not understand why, but I talked to my dad about it. And he said, sometimes, I kind of already said this, but he said, sometimes you don't have to walk away from people. God, you know, takes them away from you because there were some things that were going on that were just kind of like iffy, you know, but I, like she was talking about earlier, I don't have the strength to just like walk away from people. <laughs> I am a people lover and a people pleaser. And I just, you know, I don't have that ability so whenever you know we started drifting apart kind of naturally dad said maybe this is just God like intervening so that you don't have to you know and so yes it is hard but like we said earlier God puts the people in your life that needs to be in your life when they need to be in your right life. so trust him I have someone in my life right now and this person is not necessarily my best friend mm -hmm. I don't want this person to be my best friend. <laughs> I don't agree with this person. I don't agree with the lifestyle. I don't agree with the whining mm -hmm. all of the time, but this person needs me. So just be aware of who needs to be your mission field and who mm -hmm. is your ear. So learning to be content is just that. It's a learning thing. We're not gonna be perfectly content 100% of the time because we're 100% human. So we're not gonna be always content with how things are. There'll be times where we get angry, possibly even to the point of being angry at God for allowing certain situations. It's not a good place to be, but I know I've been there. But it's in those times, I believe that he shows us who's really in control and it's not us. Just remember that God sees the whole picture, the beginning from the end, just like with Job. Um, God saw in the beginning whenever he had all of his sons and all of his cattle and all that. And then God knew that all that was going to be stripped away from him. But God also knew that he was going to bless him yeah. with even more in the end. So right now you may be hurting. You may not be in a good situation. You might be discontent. But just remember the one that's in control is the one that sees the very beginning yeah. to the very end. And he has a great plan and purpose for your life. He absolutely does. Thank you so much for watching this special video episode of the podcast. I've been so excited about this since I asked Ashlyn to come join us. Um, we have plenty of bloopers, which I may or may not <laughs> compile. There's been a lot. Yes, I may or may not put those into a video and show you later. Just keep an eye out. I probably will. Um, <laughs> I've enjoyed so much chatting with you. Yes, Thank no you problem. for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I loved it. So until next time, talk to y'all later. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. This video episode was so much fun. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And if you haven't already, check out the book Striving for Rubies, available on Amazon now. That link is also in the description below.